Today, I'm going to show you the new Orb One coffee maker from Crucial Detail and share my first experiences of using it. This is a little bit different from my usual videos and I've got a number of technique videos and videos about interesting dishes off the menu that are in the works but I thought it'd be nice to do something a little bit different today and show you something that's new and just becoming available and explain why I got it and what I think is cool about it. So the Orb One is a stovetop coffee maker from Crucial Detail. I backed the Kickstarter for this a while ago, and to be honest, 95% of the reason that I backed this and bought one is because it's designed by Crucial Detail. If you've not heard of them before, it's Martin Kastner's design company, and they primarily make beautiful tableware for restaurants, bars, chefs, and for the home. Their work's very elegant and has a distinctive style, but it's also very practical. From working closely with chefs and restaurants, they really understand the demands of using things in a busy service and things getting heavy repeated use. So I feel very confident getting things from them that not only will they be beautiful, but they're going to be robust and have a good lifespan. They've designed a few things actually that I use on my menu. First off, this porthole infuser bottle, which I've used for cordials, cocktails and infusing honey. It's a beautiful glass bottle that can be disassembled so that ingredients can be layered into the bottle before it's sealed and the ingredients can infuse. These are great and I used one to make a lilac infused honey that I then used to finish off a dish on the menu last year. Then they've also designed these white dishes, which I've used a few times on the menu and are very elegant, but again, really robust and can stand up to a lot of use and these spoon rests, which I've been using on the menu for eight years now, and I think I've only managed to chip one of them in that time, so that's pretty good going. The reason I wanted to mention up front how robust I found their products to be is because it's easy to see how beautiful the design is, but it's knowing that these things are gonna last a long time that helped me make the decision to back the Kickstarter for this coffee maker. So the Orb One is their new product, and again you can see what a beautiful object it is and the care that's gone into making this. They've just finished supplying the Kickstarter backers now, so as I understand it, this should be available to buy publicly pretty soon. Mine arrived just the other day and I thought I'd film and talk about my first experiences of using it and then hopefully if you're interested in them, this gives you a little bit of insight. I'm not a coffee expert and while I make coffee for my guests at the end of the tasting menu using a coffee siphon and I'm really happy with the results I get from that, it's not something that I then tend to use just for myself during the day. It's a little bit of an extra faff to set up and because it's delicate I'm a bit more hesitant to get it out unnecessarily. The coffee siphons are beautiful as well but again being glass obviously they're delicate and I have broken one of these before. And that was another reason that I decided to get the orb. I wanted something that I could use for myself during the days. And so I'm going to show you what you get, how to use it. And then I'll talk a little bit about the pros and cons that I found with it. So this is what you get in the box. There's the orb coffee pot and I'll go through its individual parts and how it goes together and works in a moment. And then there's also a coffee scoop, which gives you a 15 gram scoop of coffee grounds. And that's what you'll need for each different type of brewing with this. There's a nice set of instructions, which are nice and clear. And one of these is actually magnetic, so you can stick it to your fridge and just have a quick reference there for the times and the amount of water for different brewing styles. There's also a QR code on these that takes you to the Crucial Detail website and there's some nicely made short videos on there showing you how to set up and clean and use the orb. Everything looks and feels very premium, like all of their stuff, and I feel like you do pay for that, but then what you get is great. I don't know exactly what the retail price will be when these are available to the public. It might have changed from the Kickstarter price, which was set a couple of years ago, but for the Kickstarter, I paid £100 for mine, or about $120. US dollars. So let me show you how it works by making a coffee with it. It did take me a couple of goes to feel 100% comfortable making coffee with this, but that's just because it's a new type of coffee maker to me. And actually, as soon as you get a little bit used to using it, it's much simpler than it might first appear. So to set this up, the orb itself disassembles, which is quite simple. 
you take a 15 gram scoop of coffee and put that into the coffee basket. And then you place this metal heat sink into the basket on top of that. That metal heat sink is gonna to help to tamp the coffee grounds down and it's gonna regulate the temperature of the water that's passing through the coffee grounds as it brews, ensuring a good flavor extraction. There's a 250 micron metal coffee filter that's built into this coffee basket. And then that's one of the things that I really liked about this is that you don't need any additional filters. That means it's very simple to use. There's no extra bits, there's no waste. It feels environmentally friendly and also it's a bit more geared to the possibility of taking it with you for travel that way. Next, the steel funnel with a silicon seal around its edge gets placed over the coffee basket and then that is the coffee set up and ready to go. This whole process becomes very fast and second nature after one or two goes at it. And then our water is going to go into the base section of the orb, which sits flat like a little pan. It's nice that this feels very stable and solid too, there's no feeling that there's a risk of this tipping over. The water needs to be preheated before we add the top section back on, ready to brew the coffee. So you can heat that water up just in the bottom pan-like section, which is certainly what I think I would do if I was traveling or camping, and it's what crucial details suggest. But I actually found that when I was at home, I ended up just quickly boiling the kettle and starting off with hot water going straight into it. And that was actually just a little bit quicker and simpler for me. With the hot water in the base section, you flip the funnel and coffee basket section over and place that on top. Again, this probably looks a little bit more awkward than it actually is. I found this very, very easy to do, especially once you've done it once or twice. And then lastly, this top layered steel section with its hemisphere shape and pouring spouts sits on top. And then this locks in and is tightened up with a quarter turn. That secures everything together and it gives you a good seal on the coffee maker. Then our next step is to heat the orb up on your chosen heat source and it'll work on most different types. So uh, gas, electric, induction, a little camp stove, it'd be fine on any and all of those. Crucial Detail give you a variety of different brewing times that you can work from for different styles of coffee. I found on my induction for a nicely brewed coffee, I needed to use it on either the very lowest or the second lowest of the heat settings. It actually heats up really quickly. Crucial Detail also have suggestions on different grinds of coffee that you can use to make different styles. I haven't played about with this too much. I did make a couple of shorter ones to experiment, but generally I've been making the longer coffees. And then you can see when this is ready because the colour of the coffee coming up through the filter will change and you'll get these bubbles coming through. You don't want to let the orb boil dry, but again, I haven't had any issues with this. And for a longer coffee like this, the brewing time is around the four minute mark. Then you can pour your coffee out straight into your cup. And this feels nice and comfortable because the orb is well balanced and it feels nice and secure in your hands. Now, I didn't get any video of the process of cleaning this, but it is very, very simple. You just run the whole thing under cold water to cool it down and then you can quite easily disassemble it and everything just gets a quick rinse to clean it. The coffee grounds come out of the little basket very neatly as a little puck. And like I say, there's no waste from other things like filters, which I like. I have really enjoyed how quick and simple to clean this is. And it's another thing that makes me more inclined to use this. It doesn't feel like any aspect of it is a hassle. So I'll just quickly take you through some pros and cons that I've found whilst using this. But just to be clear, the cons aren't really criticisms or faults with this piece of equipment. It's more just a couple of things that are probably worth bearing in mind if you're looking at maybe picking one of these up. So the pros for me start with the fact that this is just clearly a really beautifully designed object. And that's entirely what I expected from Crucial Detail. Like the porthole bottles that I mentioned earlier, this is something that I'd be really happy to just have out on display even when I'm not using it. And crucially, it's been made with huge attention to detail and they've obviously really thought about how people are going to actually use this. And that thoughtful design means they've been able to make something deceptively simple. Because it isn't quite like another coffee maker that I've used before, it did take me that first couple of goes to feel totally confident that I was doing things right. But once I was used to it, I found it great, really easy to use, super easy to clean, and I think that's an important thing to emphasize too. 
Like I've mentioned, I love the fact that this is waste free and I'm not having to use filters. It's environmentally friendly, which I, I really appreciate. It's practical too, because that's one less thing to remember if you wanted to pack this up to travel and take with you. And that robustness is something that I really like too. Again, this is something I would feel confident taking with me for travel, whereas something like the glass coffee siphon that I use, I limit my use of it even in the house because it feels like a delicate object. With the solid wide base of the orb, it feels really stable and like it could easily sit on a camp burner and I wouldn't be scared of it tipping over. And most importantly, it makes beautiful coffee with a fantastic flavor. And so the fact that you can do that quite simply and using an object that's so beautifully designed means it's definitely not something I'd hesitate to recommend to people. There are though a couple of things that you might want to bear in mind if you're thinking of picking one of these up or you're trying to decide between different styles of coffee maker. So this is really a one person machine. This is going to make you one cup of coffee at a time. So that is great for me working on my own during the day. But if you wanted to make a batch of coffee for a couple of people or for a larger group, this isn't really going to be the thing that you want to use, I think. Also worth bearing in mind if this is important to you is that the coffee you make with this is not going to come out like piping hot. The flavor of the coffee has always been fantastic out of this for me and that's partly because they've engineered this with some clever heat management inside it. Because of that the coffee that comes out is always really delicious but it's not necessarily going to be the hottest coffee ever. It's a bit more similar in temperature to pour over coffee made with something like the Chemex so I guess it just depends whether that's something that's important to you. Those are the reasons that I end up using the coffee siphon when I'm making coffee for my guests at the end of the menu because it does make it that bit easier to make a batch of coffee and it does come out really nice and hot, even if it takes me a few minutes to get around each of the tables. But like I say, that isn't something I reach for during the day, whereas the orb definitely is something that I would just quickly grab to use myself. The last thing that I'd say is I did struggle just once or twice to get the top section to screw onto the coffee maker first try. Sometimes it just took me a second go to get it just positioned correctly. But again, I found that easier each time that I've done it and I've only been using this for a week. I'm sure it'll become second nature in no time. As I say, these aren't criticisms really or flaws, but just a couple of things that you might wanna know about this if you're thinking about buying one. I found that using this fits into my daily routine really well and currently it's my go-to thing to grab for making a coffee in the middle of the day. Now that I've used it a few times, I find it all really automatic and I loved how quickly I was able to get really good results with this, especially as someone that's not in the coffee world. It's definitely something that I'm very happy to recommend and I intend to keep using mine long term. I'll put a link to the Crucial Detail website down in the video description and I hope that having a first look at their Orborn coffee maker has been interesting. I think that we'll probably be back to either my recipes or culinary techniques in the next video and I've got a couple of things that are taking me a while to work on but I am really excited about for when they're ready to share. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.